Navitation, uh, the spoon needle, has a point which is as sharp as a grain of millet. It controls the channels by touch, not penetration, so as to bring about the chi. When the disease is in the channels and the chi is sparse, tonify at that point. Treat by using the spoon needle at the well, spring, stream, river, shoe points. So here we have a whole bunch of different differentiation. Some are very fat, some are very thin. We're gonna go over the anatomy of this in a minute, but there's a huge variety of these. This is the anatomy of a tation. All tation have some things in common. We have a tail. So in the future, when I start talking about tation, I say use the tail end. That's what I'm talking about, the sharp point. Now, not all of them have the sharp point. Some of them are quite dull and some of them are extremely sharp. Generally, we're gonna use the tail for dispersion. If you think about what sharp feels like when you poke yourself with something and you have that little jump, that little flinch reflex, sharp is dispersive. We have a shaft. Now the shaft is gonna vary quite a bit. As we can see in this last picture, we've got tation ranging from very thin to quite wide. And there's difference in, in these. I think there's kind of, depending on the style of treatment that you're doing, you're gonna want one size or another. So for instance, a very fat tation might be good if you're mimicking more engine type techniques, pressing. But it becomes very difficult to do rotation techniques. So if you're doing, say, a Shudo Denmai style super rotation technique where you're kind of vibrating the needle, spiraling it back and forth very quickly, if the shaft is too wide, it won't work. You can't get the control. It works very well if you've got a very thin tation. But if you've got a really thin tation and you want to do stroking and pressing techniques, you actually run the risk of bending your tation. I make a tation specifically for New England School of Acupuncture that's extremely thin. The techniques that I do that we're gonna be going over in this class, if you tried to do it with that needle, you'd bend it. But they do much more stationary techniques, much more precise techniques, and that's where their design works. So the shaft is very important. Oh, and there's even different shaped shafts so when I was in Japan, they had a square shafted needle that was designed to be able to put on the table without rolling away for blind acupuncturists. That tation was so sharp and didn't actually have a tip. It was just a really, really sharp point. Then we have ribbing for vibration techniques, and it also kind of helps the grip. This, I think, is a more modern function and tation. I used to put wider ones in, and then I messed around with some Dr. Bear's tation, and he had these narrow ones. And then I messed around with some of Funamizu's more modern tation, the one that he designed, and he had a slightly different thing. And so this is where I arrived. And I think this design is a nice kind of middle ground with things, but you can do vibratory and scraping techniques with that. It also helps to hold it in your hand when you're doing things. The neck of the tation. This is that taper, and yeah, we have a taper on both ends. Some tation have a very angular, um, non-fluid neck, and I think a lot of it comes down to the difference between a machine-made tation and a handmade tation. With a handmade tation, you're probably gonna get a more fluid flute. With a machine-made tation, they're often like angular and straight across. And finally, the tip. The size of the tip, as we can see from these, will vary greatly, whereas we have some that have very large tips, some that don't have tips at all, they just have a point, and some that are right in the middle. And again, that's going to vary depending on the style you're doing and how you use them. Now, the material that we make tation out of also matters. And depending on who you talk to, this is going to vary a bit, but traditionally, we tend to think of silver as the most sedating metal. And we have this scale. Silver, copper, and gold are the most common materials for tation, by far. Occasionally, you'll see something made out of some other metal. Usually, it's silver, copper, and gold. Um, 
my take on this as somebody that's worked with the metals really extensively and I've unfortunately inhaled a lot of metal dust. I've had it ground into my hands. I know what it smells like and tastes like from working on. I've probably made, oh, I don't know how many thousand tation in the last 10 years. My take is they're all different. Calling one tonifying and calling one reducing is kind of reductive and it doesn't really do it justice. One of the interesting things though about this traditional trajectory of how things are, if we look at electrical conductivity, the resistance, thermal conductor, and thermal expansion, they go in order of most reducing to most tonifying. I think that's really, really interesting. In essence, I kind of feel like silver takes on what you give it. It's the most electrically conductive, the most thermally conductive metal on the planet. I think that when I pick up silver, it just does what I tell it to. It doesn't impose itself on the treatment. Now, copper has a warmth to it, and it has a tendency to go to the blood level. So if you're treating things in the low channels or doing mental emotional stuff, copper tends to be a really good metal to use. And gold tends to be even a little warmer. I actually use a gold tation probably most often. I used to use silver more often. Gold tends to be more tonifying. It tends to have a quicker action. It tends to work faster than silver, but you also run the risk of over treatment sometimes, of just working a little too aggressively with gold.